museum at FIT is the most fashionable museum in New York City. Our mission is to educate and inspire diverse audiences with innovative exhibitions and public programs that advance knowledge of fashion. Some fashion exhibitions are just a display of beautiful clothes. They don't tell you anything new or important. All of our exhibitions are based on original research because we want to make sure the exhibitions are both beautiful and intelligent. If I had to really describe the museum at FIT in one word, I would say relevant. Provocative. Kaleidoscopic. Intelligent. Seminal. Fabulous. Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafferoff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, a powerhouse in the world of fashion. Her name, Valerie Steele. Valerie Steele is the chief curator and director of the museum at FIT. Let's all welcome Valerie Steele. Valerie, it is so nice to have you with us today. And Valerie, can you tell us a little bit about the work you do? I started as chief curator at the museum at FIT in 1997. And I had already taught fashion history there. Now I had a chance to put that in the context of museum exhibits. A few years later, I was appointed director of the museum. And since then, I've been working with a really great team to put together four fashion exhibitions a year, plus a score of student and faculty and staff exhibitions all around the campus. Yes, and I think you're known as an author, and I believe you've authored or edited 25 books. You've also curated over 20 shows. And then you're also known as an intellectual public figure. What is an intellectual public fi figure exactly? Well, public intellectual is such a funny term, but it, it means somebody who is like a professor or a curator, but who doesn't just talk to students, who also talks to members of the general public. For example, one of the things I like best about fashion is that everybody believes him or herself capable of understanding and appreciating fashion. So I can really talk to anyone from nursery school children to elderly people to teenage boys, and everybody has an opinion and an idea about fashion. Yes, and especially in New York, it seems like we're the fashion capital of the world now. Of course, Paris used to be, but with so many designers, American designers in New York, and then other designers coming to New York, and the love that New Yorkers hold of fashion, it's, it's where it's at as far as I'm concerned. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the COVID-19 pandemic and its effect on the fashion world. And then we'll go back to FIT. Okay. I, from what everything I've seen, it's had a miserable effect. Many people lost jobs. A lot of the fashion houses weren't selling the way they normally do. And then a lot of influencers and, and people um, who are generally out and about like myself, wearing beautiful fashion, are almost afraid to show uh, their sense of fashion right now because of all the suffering. Is that going to change and will it change soon? It's been a, it's been a terrible year for fashion, of course. Um, independent designers have gone out of business, stores have closed, um, and many consumers either don't have the money or as you say, are reluctant to dress up because there are not many places you can dress up for anymore. We're not going often to the office and there are fewer parties and they tend to be smaller parties just with a few intimate friends. So there are less occasions to dress up. The problems with fashion though have been going on for a long time. It's just that COVID really exacerbated that. We need to reset the fashion system in a way so that um, it's more sustainable and we can enjoy all of the really good things about fashion, the way fashion helps us make life special and beautiful while minimizing the things that cause problems to sustainability or to making people feel inferior. 
Yes, and I think what I'm hearing is that after this pandemic goes away, and it may be still a few more years, that we are going to have a complete revolution in fashion, meaning people are going to be dressed to the nines and we'll also see more cultural diversity in fashion. And I think that's a great thing. And now about diversity, we've had um, a year where there has been a whole focus on racial justice. And in my estimation, racial justice is very important. We need to have opportunity for everybody, each person, regardless of their, the color of their skin, their sexual preference, their gender, their age, everyone has to be treated fairly and equally. And what are you doing at FIT to promote racial justice? This has become an enormous international movement now in the wake of Black Lives Matter. Uh, FIT has diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, and so does the museum at FIT. We've been working very hard at the museum to try and um, diversify and decolonize our collections, our exhibitions, to diversify our staff, um, our programs. Uh, everything about the museum has to be, I think, more inclusive and more diverse. A few years ago, one of our brilliant young curators, Liz Way, did a show on Black fashion designers. And when she was working on it, she found that out of all the designers listed on major sources online like Vogue.com, only about 1% were Black. And this was astonishing to us because the entire world loves Black culture. And there's been so much influence by um, members of the African diaspora on global style. And now finally, once again, we're trying to get more Black designers into the public eye supported in a way that because of years of structural racism wasn't really true before. So now Liz is working on doing an even bigger show on Africa's fashion diaspora. The museum has been buying a lot more work by a wide range of designers of African descent from around the world. And uh, I think this will be very exciting and important thing because all studies of creativity have shown that the more diverse the pool of players is, the more creative the results are. We're also working on a show about Latin American fashion that will be curated by Tanya Melendez. Uh, and um, we have done shows before on Chinese fashion, for example, and Japanese fashion. So there's still a lot more to be done. And we've done one on global fashion capitals uh, which brought us knowledge of amazing designers in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Mali. So I think it's, it's a very exciting moment actually to be thinking of fashion in a new way through a really global lens. No question. And I have one designer that I've been supporting by purchasing his clothing, B. Michael. He's based yes. in New York, and I know the museum has supported him. You've had some of his clothing and some of your exhibits, and uh, I think it's been tough for uh, designers, uh, Black fashion designers, and I'm so happy to hear that FIT is embracing cultural and racial diversity, and that you have done so for a long time, but I'm glad to hear that you're doing even more. And as a board member of the Couture Council, which is the museum at FIT, I've been a board member for 10 years. I have to say that I'm proud of the work of the Fashion Institute of Technology, and I'm honored to be involved. Now, what about discrimination in the fashion world outside outside of FIT, has this been going on for a long time? Well, there've been waves of, we, we know that there've been black designers for 150 years, but um, only in certain periods have some designers become more recognized. When Stephen Burroughs, for example, graduated from FIT in the 1970s, that was a moment of great sort of cultural diversity and he and Patrick Kelly and other black designers became famous, Willie Smith did, and they all had a great moment in the 70s and 80s. But after that, it seemed that society became more parochial. You saw fewer black models on the runway, fewer name 
black designers, lots of, of um, black creatives were still working in the fashion industry, but they very often weren't the face of the company. In large part, I think this is because of structural racism, which involves also um, economic problems. So there's simply insufficient capitalization in back of a lot of black owned firms. Yes, and it's good to see things changing very rapidly now. And now getting back to the Fashion Institute of Technology, would you talk about some of your favorite exhibits that you've curated? Oh, well, favorites are almost always things you're looking forward to in the future. Um, but we, we've done things on London fashion. I love doing my one on Japan fashion because it was all contemporary Japanese fashion, which is so avant-garde and the Japanese are just mad for the latest fashion. It's really exciting. And I did a show with Daphne Guinness, who is an absolutely lovely person to collaborate with. That was really fun to go through all of her closets and see her McQueens and her Chanel's and her Valentino's and to interview her friends about her creativity. Gothic Dark Glamour was a great fun show. Lots and lots of goth kids came to that and, and liked the show. I think that was important because it, it showed that it wasn't just fashion designers copying street style, but that designers like Rick Owens um, were inspired by the same kind of things that inspired goth kids. Things like vampire movies and gothic tales of horror from the 18th century. And how important is it to you as the curator to move new designers forward? Because we're in a situation where right now with this pandemic, we have a lot of people that are struggling and especially the youngest and the, and the most um, unseasoned designers are really having a rough time. Is this something that FIT is interested in embracing and helping young talent move forward? with or are you doing that or or what exactly is going on we do we do purchase clothes from new emerging designers we know that we're as an established fashion house could give us an ensemble as a gift and it wouldn't hurt their balance line it is difficult for emerging independent designers to do that so we try always to pay for clothes by young or emerging designers it's a little bit like buying contemporary art you're doing a, you're, you're making a, a educated guess that they're going to really develop and be someone who will be influential, who will have a long career. But for example, we bought Rodarte's dresses from their very first collection because they were doing something that was so interesting and unusual. It seemed that that was, was going to be important. Even if it was never going to be a mega successful financial brand, it was one that would have an impact. Yes, now getting back to you, Valerie, the Washington Post called you one of the brainiest people in the fashion world. And how do you feel about that? And I think that's such an honor to be called brainiest because you've written how many books? 25 or you've written or edited 25 different fashion books. I have some of your books. They're spectacular. And I think for the true fashion lover to read about fashion and then to go to these exhibits at FIT and then say the Metropolitan Museum of Art, it's so uplifting and it's so exciting. And then, but tell us about being the brainiest woman or <laughs> brainiest person in the fashion world. How does that feel? Well, there's lots and lots of super smart people in fashion. It's a myth that, you know, fashion designers really are not articulate or intelligent. They're extremely intelligent. But Very. I do think that mo most fashion people are more visual than they are verbal. And so it's, it's interesting to try and write books where you're talking about fashion and thinking about fashion, um, perhaps from different angles than designers or people who are shopping for themselves would be. That's one of the things that's cool about fashion exhibitions. Instead of having fashion be part of life, it's removed and brought into a museum space and you can look at it with different eyes, not as a commodity, not as something in your closet, but maybe objectively as something that could be like a kind of work of art. And Valerie Steele, for what about our viewers who maybe wanna donate couture pieces or unique pieces? 
I've had a lot of fun being able to donate shoes for one of your upcoming collections. Yes. Do you, uh, do you encourage people to reach out to you to donate? Certainly. We're in a very New York situation where all our clothes are stored at the museum in Manhattan and Chelsea. And so there's a limit to how many new things we can add every year. But that said, we do certainly have a wish list of, you know, co interesting contemporary designers. So if there's something you're not wearing anymore, but you really love it and you think it's an important piece, please do write or call my office. Because as you say, you helped with our big shoe show, which will be taking place in about a year and a half. We've got a big book coming out with Tashin of maybe 400 of our best pairs of shoes out of more than 4,000 total shoes in the museum. And the collection for dresses, and we have about 50,000 garments and accessories from the 18th century to the present. That's a lot of dresses. And Valerie, tell us about some of the upcoming exhibits. You're online, I, can, I know you can see your exhibits online, but what is really something that you're really looking forward to? And then I want you to talk about the Couture Council luncheon, who we've honored and who we will be honoring because it's very exciting. Okay, well, um, let me jump ahead for a minute to the Couture Council. We can't talk yet about who we will be honoring because that's still a top secret, but we have honored many, many important people, uh, including last time it was Christian Louboutin, the amazingly brilliant uh, shoe designer. We honored Karl Lagerfeld of Chanel, Valentino himself. Um, we honored Dries Van Noten, Manolo Blahnik, Carolina Herrera, um, oh, Isabel Toledo, Narciso Rodriguez, Oscar de la Renta, so many great designers. And this is this is our big fundraiser. As you know, the, the Couture Council is a membership group that supports the museum at FIT. And one of our biggest fundraising events, the biggest one, is the Couture Council Awards Ceremony and Benefit Luncheon, which we hold once a year. And so that gets together about 600 of New York's fashionistas and people fly in from other states. It's a very glamorous, wonderful moment. I remember when we honored Valentino, so many people wore Valentino red. It was really, really glamorous. And I was wearing a little V pin, a gold pin from Cartier that had belonged to my mother, who was also named Valerie. And Mr. Valentino came over and he just traced the little V on the front of my dress. And I just sort of fondly thinking, oh, they are V for Valentino. So the, the Couture Council is important for us because FIT is part of SUNY, the State University of New York. So we're a public institution, and that means we need to raise money to, um, to collect, conserve, document, exhibit, and interpret fashion. And all of our staff, of course, and some funding comes from museum, sorry, all of our staff is paid for by FIT, so by the city and state. But in order to put on all of these exhibitions, we need to raise additional money. And the Couture Council has been such a wonderful, reliable way of doing that. Of course, we also get support from corporations. Nordstrom's been a, a big supporter of ours. Um, and from foundations like the Kobe Foundation and NISCA. But um, it's actually people, Couture Council members, who have been our most reliable supporters. Yes, and these luncheons are fun. And Every year the luncheon is held at Lincoln Center. It opens up Fashion Week in September. Uh, many celebrities show up. It's a real seen and be seen event. And I've been going for years. I enjoyed meeting all of the top designers and being part of this great luncheon. And so Couture Council, I have to say under your leadership, Valerie is doing a great job. And let's talk a little bit about the Fashion Institute of Technology and a little bit about how important it is for these young students and their futures. I know if I wanted to study fashion and have a career of it, FIT would be the place to be. Well, FIT is an extraordinary place. It was founded in 1944 in the middle of World War II when Paris was occupied by the Nazis. And so members of the fashion industry in New York thought we need 
a first class school that can train future designers and fashion executives and marketers. And so they started the school, which has grown and grown and now has more than more than 50 different majors. So it's not just fashion, it's advertising, it's communications, it's illustration, it's toy design, it's interior design, it's business technology. It's a really expansive school of art and design, business and technology, and it's part of SUNY. And the museum has been a division of FIT since 1969. That's when it was founded as the um, design laboratory for the fashion industry. So fashion designers and fashion students and other students could come in and use the collection as inspiration. And then when they built our building in 73, we started to have exhibitions. We had the first exhibition of Paul Poiret since, well, since ever. It was the first one in the world. And Madame Poiret loaned clothes to that. That was organized by the first director of the design laboratory, Robert Riley. And he put on other amazing shows. And he was followed then by Richard Martin and Harold Coda, so who put on shows like Three Women about Chanel, sorry, about VA, McCardle, and, and Ray Kawakubo. And they put on fashion and surrealism. And so we've been putting on great shows now for decades. At the moment, the museum is closed because of the pandemic. As you said, everything we're doing is online, lots of programming online. But we have already soon, I hope, we'll be able to open our show, um, Ravishing the Rose in Fashion, which is an incredibly beautiful look at 300 years of rose imagery in fashion. And then after that, we have a big show coming up on 1990s fashion. So everything from Tom Ford to Martin Margiela, really fabulous decade, which is having a big influence right now. And we have one coming up on shoes. We're having our gigantic shoe exhibition with the huge book by Tashin. We'll have one coming up in a couple of years on hip hop, which should be really exciting. So um, yes, we have, we have a million exhibitions coming up. It's all really fun and uh, great for any fashion lover or just for someone who wants to experience the culture of fashion. And for our viewers, we are with Valerie Steele. She is the chief curator and director of the museum at FIT. She is a powerhouse in the world of fashion known worldwide for her intelligence and her knowledge of the fashion world and what she can bring to fashion. She brings excitement and, and, and new ideas and fashion is about embracing new cultures and, and stepping out of the box. And being a member of the Couture Council board, I have learned that through my interest in fashion, I've been able to step out of the box in terms of who I am and what I do. And because fashion is expresses what's inside for so many people. Now, Valerie, getting back to some of the graduates of the Fashion Institute of Technology, who are the most successful designers who have graduated from FIT? Because people I don't think are aware of who's, um, who your graduates are. Oh, well, I mean, some of our alumni include Michael Kors and Calvin Klein. Um, some people just dropped in for some courses and, and didn't graduate. So I'm not sure exactly how many went through the full, the full four years for a bachelor's, but many, many people have gone to school here, sometimes for other subjects than what they became famous for. So Roxanne Lowett, the fashion photographer, didn't major in photography when she was at FIT. I think she did textile design, but it gets, the students who come to FIT are so motivated. And so they are often are people who have had an image of what they want to do ever since they were little children. And it's very exciting. Working with the students is something that I enjoy a lot. And we're now having a, a, another cohort of our MFA students. And I'm really looking forward to meeting them. I've seen videos of their graduating collections and they're so talented. And even the AA students, you know, who are just there for a year, they're amazingly talented. I help, 
uh, pick out some of their things for exhibitions every year. They're just brilliant. Yes, and uh, people like Michael Kors and then Calvin Klein, these designers have really, really made it. And I see they're also very involved in the giving back process. And I think that's so important. This show is about philanthropy. And Valerie, how can people get involved with the Couture Council? I understand there's a membership and you encourage membership and how can people, can they volunteer? What can people do? Well, we have a range of memberships. The basic membership for a person or a couple is $1,000 a year, but there are also youth memberships for $350 and professional memberships. So if you're working in fashion, but you're still young, they're $350 memberships. Um, all of our programs and exhibitions are free to the public. So I think that's one of the ways that we've been very successful because philanthropists appreciate that making these museum exhibitions and all of our public programs where we have people like Christian Louboutin will come in and be interviewed and talk with me. And then the students can come up and, and meet him afterwards. You went to the talk that we did together. And uh, that's a really important thing for them to be able to ask questions of important figures in fashion. And for young people who are interested in pursuing a career in fashion, what advice do you give to them? Pretty much the same advice I'd give to people who wanted a career in any field. Work hard and be nice. I think that that's the simplest thing. Um, you really have to be the kind of person that other people want to work with. Because even if you're a genius, if you're dreadful, people will not want to work with you. Uh, <laughs> And that is so true. And Valerie, you are always a delightful person to be around. And those that I've met at FIT are all super nice and super delightful. And I think for young people also, you must believe in yourself. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you can't because you can. And move forward, work hard, like Valerie Steele said, and you will achieve. Now, Valerie, how can people donate to the museum at FIT? What is the website for donations? Because a lot of people watching this want to give, and even if you can only give a small donation, $25, $50, every donation helps, and it propels the museum, and then the education of students forward. Absolutely. Well, come to our website. Uh, it's FITNYC for New, uh, Fashion Institute Technology, New York City, um, dot edu, and then slash museum. But really, if you just Google FIT Museum, you should be able to get our website. And then they'll have um, places that you can contact about making donations or finding out about when we come back, tours and classes and other things you can do at the museum. And then they can also find out how to watch the uh, virtual exhibits, correct? Absolutely. And all our programs are on, on YouTube, et cetera. So yeah, if you come to our website, you'll get, find out everything. It's all very exciting. Now, moving forward, what do you predict is going to happen with fashion? What are we going to see in 2021, late in the year, 2022, and then into 2023? Well, a lot of people uh, who've looked at history feel that um, there's a lot of pent up longing for fashion and for socializing and going out and having fun with your friends and feeling and looking special. So when as things get safer, um, I think there's gonna be an explosion of creativity and a lot of people will be wearing new fashion and um, I could even be a kind of like the 1920s, like the roaring 20s, a kind of golden age of fashion and creativity. And I like that. It'd be so much fun. The roaring 20s will, will be in the 20s. <laughs> and I think you're right. People are so uh, bottled up from staying home and social distancing, wearing masks and not being around too many people. And people just after when once it's safe, people want to go out and have a good time and they want to express themselves through fashion. And I do hope we have a big revolution in fashion and and people aren't afraid to get up and, and maybe we'll even enter a period of costumes where people imagine themselves 
in different roles as different people and different things, animals or whatever. I I love that. I mean, I'm I love fashion. Oh, you have to so. come to Japan with me next time, Jean. We'll go visit the cosplay kids in Japan. I'm ready. I'm ready <laughs> for any trip. Well, Valerie, thank you very much. And today with us was Valerie Steele. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafiroff, and I'll see you next week.